Last night, West Midlands Police, including firearms officers, executed a warrant at address in Burnaby Road in Coventry as part of a long-running criminal investigation. During the operation, a 31-year-old man was shot dead by police. This is clearly a tragic incident that will be thoroughly investigated. His family have been supported by a specially trained officer from the Independent Office for Police Conduct. Two other men aged 26 were detained inside the property and have been arrested on suspicion of being concerned in the production of cannabis and remain in custody this afternoon. Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Coventry. I've been in contact with the family of Sean Fitzgerald, rest in peace. Some of you may not be aware of Sean's story due to the little attention that he has received from the mainstream media. Sean was 31 years old when he was shot dead by armed police in an operation on the 4th of January in 2019. The inquiry into his death and why he was killed when he had no weapon and was no threat to the police is still going on. They haven't even got past the IOPC, Independent Office of Police Conduct, investigation to see if it will go on to the inquiry. There is a big campaign online for this, so I'd appreciate it if you follow all the social medias at Justice for Sean Fitzgerald. Sean was an ex-serviceman. He'd been in the army since he was 18 years old. He'd only recently come out of the army and he was going to see friends in the Coventry area. He was 31 years old and the police said that it was an intelligence-led operation in the initial report by the Guardian newspaper the day after the shooting. Even at 1pm the day after, police said they couldn't confirm whether a gun was at the scene and the police watchdog said they was investigating. It was initially believed that he was shot in the back as reported in this story but the post-mortem revealed he was shot in the chest. Body-worn video was available too, and it has been examined during the IOPC investigation. Police arrested a 26-year-old man at the scene of the shooting in the house on what they believe was involvement in the production of cannabis, following what they said was a long-running criminal investigation. I found out from his girlfriend that they actually released them very shortly afterwards with no charges and no cannabis was found in the property. And it has recently been revealed that no firearm was also found in the property or on Sean. Witnesses on Burnaby Road, the road where it happened, it's a large residential street where they described 17 police cars arriving and armed officers at the house as the street was closed. A friend of Sean Fitzgerald called Ali told BBC News at the time that he had a heart of gold and he would go out of his way for anyone. No matter how nice or how bad a guy was, nobody deserves to be killed like that, he said. A father of two who lived in the area said that the street was cornered off and he heard four or five shots after witnessing officers approaching the house. Five to six armed officers came out and they were at the front door. There were some gunshots and that is what the witness told the press association at the scene. It was later determined that it was one shot to his chest that killed him. The IOPC director Amanda Rowe said our investigation is in the very early stages and they will be working hard to establish what has happened. My thoughts with the family and all of those affected by the incident. So this was all the way back January the 5th. They'd initially opened this investigation and we are now in October 2020. In coverage by newspapers such as The Sun, the headlines ran as drug bus gone wrong. And this, I feel, is a major part of why this story didn't get the major attention that it deserved because people had the impression that there may have been drugs at the property. He was being arrested for drugs. But in actual fact, he had no drugs and he had no criminal record. And there was no drugs found at the property. And nobody from that property at that time has been charged with any criminal offence. Sean was very popular and much loved in the area and bikers came together to pay tribute to him when he was buried in Coventry. Sean's funeral was on Friday March the 1st at St Thomas Church in Coventry. His coffin was decorated with photos from his life and he was laid to rest at Marston Lane Cemetery in Bedworth at 1.30pm. His family released a statement and a photo of Sean enjoying himself at the local Rico Arena. 
They said there has been a lot of public interest and concern about the circumstances of Sean's death, which are currently under investigation by the IOPC. Sean's family are engaged in that investigation and they are devastated that they are laying to rest Sean in these circumstances. They continue with their efforts to uncover the truth and hold those responsible for Sean's death to account. They had nothing further to say at this stage and the family wanted their privacy to be respected. The family has requested that no flowers be sent and all donations go to help the heroes. Donations can be made via J.E. Hackett and Sons online. In response to the death of Sean as well, a banner calling for justice for Sean Fitzgerald was hung over Coventry Ring Road and the banner was draped over the side of the Canal Basin Bridge in full view of motorists and accompanied by a poster of Sean himself. And respects were also paid for Sean in a moving song by artist Breeze T.O.H. and Flavor. The song was called Halo and it was on Link Up TV and he paid respects to him and also briefly explained the injustice they felt about the whole situation. The video featured cameos from a lot of Sean's friends also, so it is good to see the city come together to pay respects and also to ask for justice. And the police have done nothing but try to reinforce the fact that they believe Sean was involved in organised crime. Even though even in his death he was an innocent man, he had no convictions and he wasn't committing any crime at the time of his death. But the police reiterated that statement several times. Sean Fitzgerald was killed as he walked out of a back door of a house. He had made no reach for a gun and he'd done nothing and had no weapons on him. And I think it's very important that the family get the answers that they deserve. And this is a story that we're definitely going to be following throughout the process. And I've been covering these stories for the past two years. The Mark Duggan inquiry I explained and broke down. And also the shooting of Anthony Granger. And I'm also in contact with his partner as well, Gail Granger, who went on to become a lawyer and battled for justice for the shooting of Anthony Granger in Manchester. So go and check out my stories on Mark Duggan and also Anthony Granger to get an update. And we've got a lot of stories coming in the future in relation to some of them as well so i really appreciate you joining me for this story please pay respects to sean in the comments and please follow his family online as well at justice for sean fitzgerald rest in peace and i'll be back again very shortly with some more news peace